on this video, I want to give an update on the video that I shared a while ago of an elder describing the reasons why he left the Jehovah's Witness organization. He just released a new video with more details, and I just wanted to do a quick review and condense all of the details and the information, create a timeline of his life, and just describe how this person woke up. I think this is really important to bring back and highlight because not every day do we get an elder, an ex-elder who is willing to discuss these things. So I want to really give this guy's story more attention. In the 40 minute mark of his video, I'll include a link in the description if you want to watch it. He describes staying in a couple's home for the delivery of his own daughter and they were having a conversation about how that JW couple's daughter, when she was pregnant, she was disfellowshipped and they were shunning her. And they didn't help her with the pregnancy, didn't help her with the labor, delivery, nothing. But that they were studying with this Bible student and she was pregnant and they were there for her. They were there for the delivery, for the labor, brought her gifts. And then she suddenly stopped studying. Mr. Yumba describes how he started thinking about the fact that they weren't there for their own daughter, but they were there for a Bible student, basically a stranger. When he said that, I was like, of course, this is exactly what they do. My mom did the exact same thing. We would have people over our house, having dinner with them, picking up their kids from school, hanging out with them, letting them come over the house only because they were studying the Bible. The moment they weren't studying anymore, we would drop them like a hot potato. And I used to be so confused and just angry. Like, you're just such a fake person. You're only hanging out with these people because they're studying the Bible. But you don't care about them. You don't genuinely care about the person because you're creating close friendships. I mean, we were spending quality time with these people. I was friends with their daughters. And then all of a sudden, just because they're not studying with us, then that friendship that months, months in creation was gone in an instant. So those were the little things that wake you up. And I totally agree with Mr. Yumba because I think that that's disgusting. You're not there for your own daughter, but you can be there for a stranger. So the inconsistencies are accurate because that's exactly how Jehovah's Witnesses are. Okay, so let's go into the early life of Mr. Chaka Yumba. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I'm sorry. <laughs> so he describes going to boarding school in the ninth grade, and he's from Zambia. So he says that this is something that happens a lot. It's not uncommon for children to go to boarding school. I'm glad that he mentioned that because within the organization, that going to school, higher education, or even boarding school, like a separation between your parents, that's a big no-no for everybody else around the world. So he's in an area where that's acceptable. And so he was able to attend this school. So then later on, he gets a scholarship and he was accepted to go to a school in Russia. That's amazing because as a Jehovah's Witness anywhere else in the world, that would have never happened. Those opportunities would have never came for us. So I think this guy was really lucky that he was able to be exposed <laughs> to a lot more than the average Jehovah's Witness. And in 2012, he got married. Okay, now comes the doubts. He was having a lot of doubts. So like he described before, the 1914 doctrine. And then he goes on to explain a little bit about the Bible translation. So that was around the 2010s to 2014, I think. So around those years is when the, the new gray Bible came out. And I remember having the same thoughts. Like, why did they create the new, this new translation? Who are these people that are supposedly experts into translating the Bible. And I remember going to that annual meeting too when the Bible came out and everything and everybody was crying, I was crying. I mean, we were all like happy, oh, this is Jehovah's blessing because they were saying that this Bible is simplified so that everybody can understand it. And then now I'm like, they literally changed scripture and it's blasphemous because they took words out, they changed the narrative of certain scriptures and that can completely change like make or break what you believe in because they literally change it. And the best example is John 1.1. 1, 1. Moving on, he says in the video that in 2015, he was appointed an elder. Then he went to pioneering school. Um, 
Oh, he he was a pioneer. And then he went to the School of Kingdom Evangelizers. That's a new term. And I guess I've been out that long to not know what that is. <laughs> and I am embarrassed because I feel like a boomer. I don't know what the School of uh, Kingdom Evangelizers is. Oh, did they change the name? I don't know. You let me know. Okay, then he was the congregation secretary. So this is like responsibilities, responsibilities. He, this guy had a lot of responsibilities. Shout out to you because I am like, wow. In 2019, he was also a part of the hospital liaison committee. And then in 2020, the SKE school class. And that was in June of 2020, he said. And then he was assigned to a new congregation in England. And this was on Zoom. I also find this interesting. He was doing all of this. And then when the pandemic hit, everything switched to Zoom. So all of your responsibilities, everything that you're doing is now in Zoom is not in person. I would think that that was less work. And he did mention that he felt like he wasn't making more of an impact than he would have if he was in person. So I do get that. This is this is interesting. He says that when the, the pandemic started in 2020, and I've never heard this angle before, but he said excitement. And I found that weird. Because you know how, you know, the doomsday, you know, stuff. So when bad things happen, it's like they get excited. They get happy when bad things happen. And I think that's so sick. So he says they were ex that he had excitement, excitement in 2020 because they com he compared it to the Spanish flu. And then he mentioned how Anthony Morris also said something in the broadcasting like, oh, it doesn't bother me because that's exactly what the brothers were going through when the flu, when the Spanish flu happened. And that was back in the day, 1914 uh, generation and how people were feeling. So they were comparing this 2020 pandemic to the Spanish flu pandemic. And then they started a campaign, I guess, of letter writing uh, as another form of witnessing and instead of going door to door. And then he he says that he didn't get a single response from the campaign. He says him and his wife sent like thousands of letters and not one response. So that was another little awakening. I got a call in December 2020 from the branch over a Russian congregation needing help. And so since he has experience, he was recommended to help in this congregation in Russia. Again, he says this was on Zoom. So he didn't physically move there. It was on Zoom. All of this that he was handling, all of these responsibilities were having an effect on him. He says that he started having panic attacks over the stress. And it wasn't until later that he became qualified in some uh, psychological therapy that he started to identify the problems that he was having. I find that really interesting because it's like the Jehovah's Witnesses really choke you out. They are going to milk and drain the life out of you because they need you. Once they don't need you anymore, they throw you away. And that's exactly what happened to this guy. He was, what, 20 plus years a witness. He did all of this. He has such an extensive Jehovah's Witness resume. And yet, because of the doubts that he was having and finally waking up, after all of this hard work, they just throw you away. This guy has committed so much of his life, went through emotional and mental trauma because he was doing all of this and now bet you anything he's going to be disfellowshipped they're going to shun him so i feel sad but i'm happy that he woke up and he will be able to experience newfound freedom and now that he's making videos i'm excited i'm excited that i caught this person on youtube brand new like he just started making videos he is an ex-elder like this is great. And I'm happy that he's speaking out. And if he sees this video or he sees, you know, the community talking more and more about this, I hope he gets a little bit of encouragement because I want more people like this to come out and to start making videos and to tell their stories because other people are just sitting there not saying anything and you never know, but they come on YouTube and they watch it and they can relate to you. They can, you can say something that will open up a little piece of their mind or give them a new point of view. Anyways, I just wanted to give this quick review on this ex-elder and his experience with the Jehovah's Witnesses. And we should all subscribe to his channel and continue following his story. I am dying to find out more information about if he was ever like in a judicial committee or 
you know, like more stories and more experiences from ex-elders. I wish <laughs> there was more stories like this because I am highly interested. As a matter of fact, one of my uncles from my father's side has recently been disfellowshipped and he was an elder as well. I texted him on Instagram and I was like, hey, uh, if you ever wanted to talk about the reason why you left or if you would ever go back, because I'm not sure if he woke up or if he's just disfellowshipped, you know, like, I don't know any of details, but I am highly interested in also finding out more information from my uncle who used to be an elder. And I don't know, I'm going to see what comes out of that conversation. And if anything, I would love to talk about, you know, more stories from ex-elders. That's interesting. And there was also a comment on Twitter from Mr. Yamba's videos of an of an elder in San Juan, I think. And he was wanting to get in contact with Mr. Yamba. And this is why telling our stories are so important because other people are going to see it. Jehovah's Witnesses might see it. You know, they might be physically in, but mentally out, and they're going to need a safe place to to talk about it. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to put all of his information in the description, and I'll catch you next time.